Well, on this particular occasion, I was just minding my own business and somebody said to me, hey, Richard, have you got a moment? And I noticed out of the gloom came this rather unusual looking fella. He had this sort of dark floppy hat, a big, long black coat and a sort of long Gandalf style beard. And he said to me, let me buy you a drink. I want to tell you something. He said, you've almost got it, but not quite. And I want to tell you the greatest secret. And I thought, oh, OK. So we went into a, a pub and we, we bought a couple of ales and he took me to the very back of the pub in one of the darkest alcoves where he said we couldn't be overheard. And we sat down and as we sat down, he reached into a bag and pulled out a board. And he opened this board and I noticed it was a game. It was Monopoly. And he said, don't worry, I'll be as quick as I can. So as we sat down and we were drinking and he was bringing out all the, the little silver playing things, you know, the, the top hat and the dog and the train and the iron. And, and then there were the community chest cards and the other ones. And then there was some of the Monopoly money, which he was just sorting out into different piles. And I thought, well, this is interesting. And he said, oh, pick a character, whichever character you like. So I looked down and I thought, actually, the top hat. I quite like the top hat. That would be lovely. So he said, do you know, your parents have done you a very big disservice in life. And I said, oh, really? What do you mean? He said, they informed on you. And I said, oh, I don't understand. What do you mean they informed on me? He said, when you were born. They informed the government about you. They took you to a building, a government building, and there, some 14 days after you were born, they told a registrar about you and they gave away your legal title. And I said, I don't really understand what you mean. They said, well, the registrar filled in a, a certificate, did they not? They filled in your name and your parents were the informants. I said, oh, that sounds, that sounds rather creepy when you put it like that. You're talking about my birth certificate, aren't you? He said, yes, that's right. And they gave your parents a copy, not the original. And he said, at that moment, you'd signed away, or effectively they had signed away, their son's legal title. And this was then turned into a bond. And I said, oh. He said, you see, the thing is, at that moment, your legal title on this certificate became a trust, a trust fund. The Treasury has now turned this into a trust fund. And at that point, he gave me a certain amount of monopoly money. He said, oh, here, here's some money for the game. And I said, oh, thanks very much. But he said at that moment, he said, oh, I don't know, the, the trust fund has probably had a million pounds put on it. And because it was bonded, it was floated onto the stock exchange and was earning money throughout the rest of your life. This trust fund would earn money. It would earn huge amounts of money. Check how much you've got there. And I counted out the money. He said, that's like a trust fund, isn't it? That's the trust fund. The bank has just given you a whole load of money. And he said, which character are you playing? I said, oh, the top hat. He said, yes, that's your legal title. He said, the government, when you ever get anything official, it will come with your name in capitalization, big capitalization, the same as on your birth certificate capitalization. That's how you know that you are a player in the legal game of life. Your top hat isn't you, is it? I said, well, no, clearly it's just a silver little thing moulded out of, out of metal. He said, exactly. It's not actually you. Just as your legal persona, your name in capitalization, is not you. And yet it's on all the bits of paper from the bank, from the tax office, all those different bits of paper on your car registration, all those different pieces of paper. That is a representation of you, but it's not actually you. Just as the top hat is not actually you. And I said, oh, OK. He said, so you've got the money from the trust. That is your estate. And we're going to play the game with your estate. 
He said, do you know much about trust funds? I said, to be honest with you, I don't know very much at all. He said, well, let me explain. You see, when you have a trust, there's a fund and it's set up by the trustee, in this case, by the Treasury, the government, the Treasury. They've put in this money. Now, in order for a trust to work, there must be two other people in it. There's three maximum, you see. There is the beneficiary, the person that the trust is set up for, which in your case is you. This money that's been put into you is yours to do whatever you like with. Oh, I said, <laughs> that's very nice. Thanks very much. He said, but there is also somebody who must administer that, the executor. So the executor is the one who will make sure that things are paid or that you can withdraw money for what you need. And he said, of course, when you're a baby, you cannot be the executor because you are a minor. So until you reach the age of majority, which is 18, your parents would be the executor. They would administer the trust for you, set up by the government. He said, the only thing is, the government, a bit canny like this, they don't actually tell your parents. And so your parents can't tell you that when you're 18, the age of majority, that you could now be the executor. So you go through life feeling that you have no money. You feel that you're a debtor, that you're constantly in debt, that you have to get a job because you need money to pay for the things you need. And yet all the time, there is this trust fund that as you go through life and you get older and the longer it's in there, the more money that it is accruing all the time. There could be, by the time you die, millions upon millions, maybe 50 million pounds are sitting in this trust, unused. He said, in theory, you could walk into a wonderful showroom of Rolls Royce vehicles. You could, in theory, go up and say, that one, is that the most expensive Rolls Royce? How much is that? It could be a million pounds. Hmm, you say, at the age of 18. I think I'll have that because I'm in credit. You've got this trust fund. I said, oh. He said, all you need to do is autograph the credit note and the car is yours. But of course, the man who's selling you the car will say, hang on a minute, I don't understand. And you'll simply just say, well, take this credit note that I have now put my autograph on, take it to the treasury and they will dip into my trust fund and pay you. You'll get your money perfectly fine because I'm in credit. Look at the game. You have this big pile of money. I've just given it to you. That is your trust fund. He said, but in the game of Monopoly, as we go around and you get penalties and you earn money, he said, when you get a penalty, what do you do? I said, well, I just pay it out of this money. He said, yes, that's what you should do in life. But in life, you don't go to your trust fund. You pay it out of the money you've gone to. You've got a job and your hard earned job. You've got this hard earned cash, real money that you're paying for all the bills and all the taxes, your council tax, your road tax, your fuel tax. You're paying your inland revenue tax, all the taxes you're paying out of your own hard earned money. And yet you don't need to. You've got this rather plush trust fund, he said. He said, look at it, you can see it. And in the game of Monopoly, that is what you do. And I said, oh, yes, I see. He said, but the money is there. He said, yes, but because they don't tell you that you are the executor of the trust, you don't know. You just think you're, you're in debt all the time and you're having to borrow money to buy a house and you get a mortgage and you're paying it all back. You could have got it straight from the trust and not had the bother. I said, wow. He said, but through life, just as it, you play on this game of Monopoly, there are hazards. And every now and again, because you've not earned enough or you fell behind with your payments or the interest rates have gone up or the, the way the legal system has worked, it seems to be always against you. You drive your car and you, you get into a penalty area and there's an infringement or you park your car and there's a parking ticket, all these sort of things. And you haven't got the money because you haven't worked hard enough or whatever it is you could end up with summonses to a court. He said, do you know what a court is? A magistrate's court? And I said, well, yes, I've got an idea. He said, it's just the legal department of the treasury. They want to make sure that you pay the bills or the infringements or the tickets and all of this. And so they'll administer it. 
So they'll have a convener, which they call a judge, at the magistrate's court, because all court sessions, all legal things, start in a magistrate's court. I said, oh, yeah. And you'll be summoned there. Now, of course, if you know that you're the executor, you can just tell them to say, well, just pay it out of the trust fund. But you don't know that, so you end up going to court. And the first thing that happens at court is, of course, they will say something like, for the record, state your name. And this is where the trick is played on you. Because you don't know who you are, you will say, my name is Richard Vobes. And at that moment, they've got you. Because effectively what's happened is you've said, I'm the top hat or the dog or the train or the iron. You've become the player of the game. You've become the fiction because their world can only work on the fiction. A real living man cannot enter a real court. They cannot deal with you. So they have to get you to be the legal fiction. And so what happens then is they become the executive, they become the sole beneficiary, and you become a legal representative of the trust but you end up paying out of your own money. So what you should do, of course, is tell them the truth because you're not a capitalised version of your name. You're not the top hat. You're not the character that's playing the legal game. Of course you're not. You're a real living man. You're the executor of the estate of the top hat or the capitalization, the persona of your living man. That's who you are just as in Monopoly. So you would say, I'd like to introduce myself. I am the executor and the sole beneficiary of the estate of Richard Vobes, the legal persona. But I am the executor. And as there is only three people that can be in a trust, it means the judge or the prosecutor or the clerk of the court is the trustee. The role can switch around depending on who is taken the role, but one of them will have that role. They will, in fact, have a checkbook ready to pay should you announce who you are. Of course, most people don't because they don't know because this is the greatest secret, he said. But once you've announced who you are and you say, well, I'm the executor of the estate, I'm the executor, I'm the one who controls and administers the top hat. So you're charging this estate, the bill of whatever it is, the parking ticket, the inland revenue, the council tax, whatever it is that's not yet been paid. He said, fine, I've no problem paying it. Absolutely. The estate will cough up, take the money out of the trust. The trust is there. So as the administrator, as the executor, you're the one in charge because the trustee has to do as you say. And by accepting and admitting and introducing yourself as the executor of the estate and the sole beneficiary, the judge has to be the trustee and he will have to pay. Well, he won't like that. He'll probably run out of court or say there is no case to answer because they tend not to like that sort of thing. But that is what it is. You don't need to pay it out of your own money. That's fallacy. You've got this money that's accruing. You can have whatever you like. I said, wow. He said, but they won't like it and they will do all sorts of things. They will use threats and menaces and potentially try and arrest you and do all sorts of things because they need you to become the legal persona, the legal person, not a real living man, not the executor. They want you to be the top hat and then they can play the game against you. So you have to resist at all times because you are a living man. You are the executor. You didn't ask them to set up the trust. They set up the trust. You're just there to administer it because you are the executor. So administer your trust, he said, with a wry smile. He said, do you fancy another drink? I said, no, no, no I'll get them, I'll get them. So I went to the bar thinking about this buzzing in my head. And when I came back with another glass of ale for us both, I noticed he was nowhere to be seen. He had gone. The board had gone and all the things, except all that was left, was the little silver top hat. And I could almost hear the words ringing in the air. You are the executor of the legal estate. The trust is in your name. Grab it.